Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. Today I finally get to talk to you about, well, at least properly talk to you about the performance from X299 or Basin Falls, depending on what you'd like to call it, which is the latest processor and chipset stack from Intel. Now I know there's an awful lot of uh, hatred going around with, um, uh, not necessarily from the AMD people, but there are a lot of people not and disliking a lot about what's going on within the Intel brand and in what they seem to be doing at the moment. Now the problem is, is I should be here today to talk to you about the four core, eight thread, um, eight core, 16 thread, and 10 core, 20 thread processors. And Intel did say to me, yes, you're gonna be getting the four core, eight, and the 10 core, 20. Problem was, last week on Wednesday, they said, oh, they're late. Um, so, basically, I, uh, I'm gonna talk to you in more depth and have a bit of a rant about the processor scenario uh, at the end in the Intel scenario, but I don't wanna take up too much of your time from the beginning. So I'm actually gonna be doing my review, as you've seen, on the 7820X, which is the eight core 20 thread, uh, sorry, eight core 16 thread processor that they're saying is going to be priced at $599. Now, I'm um, having a little bit more time because I'm not going to be getting the uh, four core or the uh, 10 core until after NDA. Meant I could have a good old play with the BIOS um, and overclocking and memory and all that sort of stuff with less stress. But to be honest with you, I would like to be covering four today, uh, sorry, three processors today, because then it gives me a little bit more balance and gives me more meat to chew on to be able to talk to you about. So I'm gonna do my best to give you the best 7820X processor review that you could have today. And then I will be back later in the week. Uh, but it, like I said, if you want a bit of a rant, wait till the end of the video. Anyway, what we do know with X299 is They've, they have added in a load more processors and also the launch got brought forward three months. It was almost a bit like, AMD did what? Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, add all this in. So essentially there's a lot of people going on about stuff not working and PCR Express lanes and stuff like that. Now, the way that you uh, need to get your head around what's going on, and this is, you also need to remember, before the AMD fanboys start going absolutely nuts at me, I'm gonna sit on the fence and I'm going to tell you both sides of the story without favoring either. I am a big AMD Ryzen fan. There's Ryzen all over the background. So let's all sit around the pub and chat like friends and not start throwing any accusations or like arguments and all stuff like that. So I'm gonna do my best. Well, I am gonna stay down the middle. If you wanna take it a different way, maybe you just need to watch a little bit more of the video. Anyway, so they, um, they have added in uh, the i5 and the, we'll say the i7, but there was an i7 last time. But what they were also gonna do is they were releasing i9 on this, so they're going much higher up with the cores. Now that was all planned. The, um, the four core uh, stuff wasn't. It genuinely was not planned for X299. And you can tell this, even without me having the processor here, I know that it wasn't planned. You wanna know why? Well, uh, with the four core process, I'll bring you this thing up. With the four core process at the bottom, you can see that's just dual, ch dual channels. Now, that might not sound like a bad thing, but I'm gonna explain something to you. X299 boards are all quad channel, which means you have banks of memory on both sides of the motherboard. So uh, where I'm running one of the quad channel ones, you can see I've got two DIMMs on one side, two DIMMs on the other side, but I can run up to four both sides. If you buy one of the four core dual channel uh, setups, you might think to yourself you'd have a memory stick this side and a memory stick this side and maybe only be able to run two each side. Well, you would be wrong. You can only use this side of the board, just like you would if it was a Z270 motherboard. Funny that. So yeah, you can only run the right hand memory bank. So the four core ones, that's already completely um, uh, messing with my OCD. So if you're, if you're one of those people that build something for, you know, you want your rig to look pretty, and let's face it, we spend a lot of money on um, our, our rigs and our cases and making everything look right, then that's already kind of a bit like, oh, 
what? It would have made more sense if they could have split it between the channels. Now I've got this sneaking suspicion, you know, kind of, and you know, kind of burbling around inside of me that essentially that i5 and the i7, I think it's probably just a Kaby Lake bit of silicon, so the actual CPU and the memory controller and all that sort of stuff on the top, despite the fact it's called Skylake X. Um, and then it's just on a different holder silicon. So you know when you look at the bottom of the processor, you've got all those gold pads. I think that's the new bit, but the actual processor bit on top that is just on a bigger bit than it would have been with the 1151. So I think they've just split it across all those extra pads. That's, I think that is my kind of um, idiot's guide to what's going on. I could be completely wrong, but the, the information that we've got from Intel has been so lacking that's why all of this stuff has kind of, you know, kind of come up and yeah, anyway, so um, it, that side of it, I personally really don't like. There are some good things to say with it and I shouldn't really be talking about this because I am going to be doing it in the main review, but there are some good things and that is if you did buy one of the i5s or the i7 and you used it as kind of to get you by for a few months and you buy a better processor later, you obviously do have a lot of upgrade options because you could start on a four core, four thread and then in six months time, you might be able to get one of the 12, 14, 16, 18 core monsters. So there is that, but if you're gonna be building at it for your rig and you're gonna build it now and it's gonna be the same rig for two years time, three years time, then personally, that kind of memory side of it would do my boxing. Now, I've not tested it yet. I'm hoping that we're gonna get really quick memory speeds out of it and I'm hoping they're gonna overclock like absolute Trojans. But the thing is, is I'm gonna be really, really looking at the 7700K. I'm not even gonna be bothered about what Ryzen did or what Ryzen does. I'm gonna be very critical about what they did themselves with the last one, because if those processes are worse than the 7700K, why would you even bother? But anyway, that's all for the stuff that we've got going on uh, later. I wanted to cover it though, because I know there's a lot of people out there that are like, ah, and just wanna blow steam out their ears about it. So I've covered it, but we are gonna have a proper good rant about it when I do do the uh, main review. I just need to be able to test it properly. It's a waste of time us all yabbering on about it and arguing about it and making clickbait videos about it until we've actually had our hands on it and we really know what's going on. Anyway, so there's been a lot of confusion about PCI Express and chipset um, uh, lanes because the CPUs do have different PCI Express lanes, but then you also get some on the chipset as well. So the CPU lanes, the PCI Express that you get on the CPU, that is just for your graphics. Um, and then you, uh, and they differ. So the, the four core ones, they are 16 threads. You've then got the, um, the six and the 12 core, sorry, the six and the eight cores have 28 threads. And then the uh, 10 core one at the top has 44 threads. So up to 44 threads to be able to saturate all your graphics cardness and all that mumbo jumbo. But then you do get another 24 on the chipset. Now the chipset, Pretty much everything uses PCI Express lanes on the chipset. So you've got your USB 3.1 Gen 2, you've got your uh, M.2s that are on the board. They will can all use up to four lanes each. I've seen some of the boards running uh, three and four M.2s. Um, so there are, there are lots of ways that you can start to gobble this up. SATAs even use a few PCI Express lanes. So you do need to keep this in mind. So for argument's sake, if you get one of the four core ones and it's only got 16 PCI Express lanes available, then to be honest with you, yes, it is gonna make some difference on the actual, the way the board kicks out. So if you um, put a graphics card in, one graphics card in, that's going to get your uh, full 16. And that would be the way I would use those. I wouldn't really be kind of expecting people to go SLI and stuff you would probably be better to get one of the better ones. Uh, but then if you drop a second one in on one of the four cores, the graphics cards are then gonna run at eight each. Whereas if you were running one of the better ones with 28 lanes, oh, hang on a minute, they'd still then be a little bit complicated because, and yes, I did put a dramatical pause in then, it would then be 16 and then it would be eight. So it does get really complicated, doesn't it? And then if you wanted to add in some of your other stuff into your board, like a sound card and stuff, you need to make sure that, if, for argument's sake, if you drop a sound card in 
and this is where it gets really complicated, some of the um, uh, PCR Express slots may even be wired into the chipset because some of them aren't, so for argument's sake, the you know you normally get the little itty bitty PCR Express 1s, or sometimes you get like a PCR Express 4 which is open-ended. They will actually be coming off the chipset. So what you need to do is look at your motherboard um, box diagram where it'll explain how the chipset and everything's all wired and that's the way you genuinely have to go and have a look. So they have made it massively complicated if you're a beginner um, and you will have to do a bit of research. But that is the time when people like I come in and I've got forums. So if you have, you know, if you have um, questions to ask, best thing that you can do Get your PCI Express box diagram. There will be a picture of it in your manual, but you can find them online quite easily. Go to your favorite forums. That might be OC3D. And essentially all you've got to do is you say, I've bought or I'm going to buy this motherboard and I want to put this stuff in it. Here's my diagram. Can you please explain how I really need to go about it? Or do I need to get a better CPU? Post the picture up so you can help people help you. And bosh, you're on to a winner. Anyway, so. Yes, it does get complicated, but you do have a lot of lanes on the chipset. 24 is a fair few, and then up to 44 on the actual CPU as well. The 28 that we're getting on, the one that we're reviewing today, it's a, quite a few, but if I'm honest, I think I would have expected a little bit more. I think I would have expected 32 as a minimum, so that you could have run SLI or Crossfire if you wanted, and not really have too many issues. Because the way that it's kind of panned out on this is it just makes me look like that you're going to have a, a dedicated graphics card, and then you have the ability, if you wanted to, to run PCI Express add-in cards for maybe like um, uh, S, uh, SSDs, so like your M.2 add-in cards. There's a lot of people coming out of RAID uh, M.2 add-ins now because um, they've got uh, slightly better controllers on and using the onboard ones. It's just, it is kind of infinitely complicated. And um, I think the, the, the Intel kind of, this has always been the more high-end enthusiast-based stuff, but I think it's making it a little bit too complicated now and too many levels. And the reason why I say that is because if you are a beginner and you kind of dive in and you grab some bits, you might end up spending more money than you needed to or end up buying the wrong stuff and have to start sending stuff back. And I don't know, it's, it's just kind of, but anyway, what we need to do is get past this slide and start moving on to the next stuff. Someone said to me on the forums, actually, I think it was Dice Hunter, said to me that I need to stop using paper and start using the tablet. So maybe we should do that, what do you think? Although I shouldn't be asking people in a video that I'm hoping lots of uh, new people are gonna watch. Anyway, so uh, Intel Turbo um, Boost Max, essentially, when you process the turbos, normally it, um, uh, it will turbo on a single core. It's pretty much the same as Ryzen. You have that one core that will just smash up. If you put too much uh, load on, so for argument's sake, you put with a benching program or with, um, say, your rendering or something like that, it won't turbo as much. Now, what they've done with this is they've kind of gone, well, what we're going to do is we're going to find the two best cores and they're going to turbo, but it actually finds the two best cores for the turbo rather than just picking the first two or something. But the problem is this is actually pretty useless anyway because on this board, essentially when I started it up, it just went straight to four gigahertz. I was like, right, okay. Now it can go up to like peak itself on a single core, sometimes it can go above that kind of four gigahertz mark. But out of the box, this was running at four gigahertz. And essentially what uh, Asus and a lot of the other boys do is they know the turbo's there and they just make it run at turbo. So it's kind of, it does sit there kind of nice. There are some settings that you have to go careful in the BIOS and, and watch. But if you go into the core thing, if you go and flick all cores, it will just literally run it really quick for you. Rather than it being, there's a, a by usage and stuff like that where it can still move around, if you just want it to run quick all the time, it's actually really simple. And uh, this did it out of the box. So um, we're now tidily on to overclocking because 
I did get a chance to spend quite a bit of time overclocking the board, testing out memory speeds and all that sort of stuff. So four gigahertz out of the box. Essentially, it was running at 1.067 volts and it was stable at four gigahertz. So I always try and uh, downclock a bit and I did get it just below a volt, um, but I couldn't get the 3200 megahertz memory running with that. So at a single volt, I had all eight cores and 16 threads running at one volt. Yes, just one volt, and that was with 3200 megahertz memory. What I also did is I started to play with memory speeds as well. Now, X99 before 3200 was a really good high memory speed on that. This was just XMP in it on its own without any stress or worry. On X99 before, I did manage on a Rampage 5 with ridiculous volts and literally pulling my like brain out to try and get it stable and trying to get stuff benched, I did manage to get 3400. With this, 3466 and 3600 megahertz was really easy uh, to get. But what you do have to watch is um, uh, sometimes, it's just like graphics card overclocking, sometimes you can and I'm not saying overclock your memory. And when I say 3200 megahertz, I mean putting a 3200 megahertz kit in it, not buying 2133 and then expecting it to just keep going up. But 3200 megahertz, you can change the kits and put faster kits in, but you will get to a point where the kits will look stable, but your memory, actual memory performance will drop off. Now with this, I weirdly, I was playing around because I always play with different memory kits because some are good and some are not so good. And that's all down to BIOS at the time, the CPU and all that sort of stuff. And I did notice with, and I don't want to say a brand because I don't want you to think I'm favoring one over the other, but I, it, it's just an early BIOS thing. One of them at 3600 megahertz wasn't doing very well. Whereas I could swap in a different brand and the, the clocks actually, carried on climbing. So 3600 megahertz is the highest quad channel kit that I have at the moment. All of my faster kits than that are just dual channel because I've been doing using them on Z270. So 3600 megahertz, quad channel, absolutely fine, and the, the rates do keep climbing. And it's something I've noticed since I've done the written review, and you can go and have a look at the full written review on the OC3D website. Um, so do just keep that in mind. At this present moment in time, with not a lot of testing been done, I would say 3200 megahertz is probably gonna be XMPable for almost all, all of you. I am hearing things that the four core ones, KB Lake, are gonna have a higher um, IMC. But once I've te properly tested the four core and the 10 core, I've got some more faster quad core, uh, quad channel memory on route as well. When I do do that review later in the week, hopefully I will be able to give you a lot more information. Like I said, I never intended on doing a single processor out of the box. There was always meant to have been, you know, a lot of variations and a lot of results for me to have dug my teeth into. But sadly, I've just kind of been like held back. But power draw. Now, uh, the reason why I've talk, spoken to you about overclocking and all that stuff is because when you look at the power draw on this, it does look like it's quite warm and it's quite high. Now, that is because of the fact it was running at four gigahertz. If I turned off that magic thing, it did go down a bit. But the reason why I've left it here looking slightly worse is because it will run like that out of the box. So run like that out of the box, so that's the result that you've got. If you want your um, processor speed to move around and be able to do all that, it might not be as bad as this. But what you can see from this is, and this is the most important thing, the fact that we have it at the top of the graph is actually a bit of a head scratcher because this, when overclocked, uses more power than the 6950X. Now the 6950X was an older bit of silicon, so it wasn't as refined, or apparently wasn't as refined, and there was more cores there as well. Now the only thing that I've got to kind of fight in its defense is the uh, 6950X would have been running at 4.4 gigahertz. This I managed, and we did all of our benches at 4.8, so eight cores with 16 threads running at 4.8 gigahertz. 
I did actually manage to get a, a five gigahertz screenshot as well. Now the five gigahertz screenshot, it wasn't, I could run a lot of benches with it. It just wouldn't pass OCCT and PC Mark 8 kept falling over and there was a couple of tests on Sandra that were falling over as well. So like the multimedia and the processor arithmetic was falling over. But when we talk about overclocking, this is another time where I can actually get to grips with you and I can talk to you and we can have a good old chat about it. So four gigahertz, we got um, stable at one volt with 3200 megahertz memory. 4.8 gigahertz was 1.22 volts and that was also with 3600 megahertz memory running. To push past 4.8 gigahertz and then go up to 4.9 and five, the volts went up really, really quickly. But the most critical thing I can say is at, we've got a Corsair H110 on this, which is the dual 140 millimeter AIO. The temps for um, the 4.8 gigahertz were kind of, that they varied from about 65 up to about 70 something, you know, at low sort of 70s. But to then get it up to like five, it literally, the, the, the temperature went up just so fast. And that is because the processor um, has thermal paste connecting the IHS, which is the metal bit on the top, to the actual silicon underneath. The bigger ones before were soldered and that was a much better thermal transfer. So we know this is a paste and what you do with the paste is you literally get to the point where you cannot cool it quick enough and the temps just rock it and that comes with adding volts in. So one of the things I've seen with this is I probably, with this processor at least, I wouldn't want to go above 1.25 volts uh, on a cooling point and that would be with epic cooling. But where we do know that it's um, thermal price is you can delid them, then you can use a liquid metal, put it back on, and a lot of people are seeing temperatures drop uh, with some of the older processors, and I know De Bauer, I think I've pronounced that properly, is saying that he's been dropping sort of like 20, 25 degrees off of some of these by delidding and repasting or putting the liquid metal in. You can get some really good temperature drops. But 1.22 volts at 4.8, I would actually be genuinely really happy with. Decent temperatures, you haven't got a void your warranty, and you do still get an awful lot of grunt there as well. It's just, I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, but I want five gigahertz. It's a bit like um, uh, Jim Carrey, isn't it, when you start pulling all the faces. But anyway, so it, it is there if you want to uh, be brave with it, but you need to remember, pop that top off and your warranty's voided, and you could pop that top off, and you could uh, do all of that, and then it might not actually, you might not actually be able to get it stable. If you put too many volts in, your temps may be great, but you can still start to degrade that silicon. So you do need to kind of keep this all in mind. The other thing that you need to keep in mind is the silicon lottery as well. So yes, 1.22 volts, I got 4.8. Yours, you might be able to get 4.8 at 1.15. Or you might need 1.3 volts in yours for 4.8. You just don't know. So I'm, I'm only ever be, be a, I can only ever tell you about my one, but you just take it as a ballpark figure because they can be fairly similar, but the volts that they need can be, you know, dr dramatically uh, either way. Anyway, so power draw, yes, it did use more than I thought because to be honest with you, if I'd have tested, uh, well, I did test the 6900K last time and that used less and that had the same amount of cores. So we've managed to get a processor that's using more power with the same cores, but you could, like I said, blame that on the fact that it, it is running quicker. It's a bit backwards though, considering Intel have been going lower power, lower power, lower power, lower power, whoa, we're gonna go back up to higher power. It's something that we said wasn't that great with Ryzen, so you know what I mean, power usage on this, meh. Anyway. So, moving on to gaming. Again, don't forget, uh, eight cores. Um, uh, when we move on to gaming, on the outside of this graph, the big beefy one right on the outside, that is the Gears of War CPU render. Now, with the Gears of War CPU render, essentially, that will love clock speed and cores. 
actually. So with the 7700K at the top, we know that's going to have been, you know what I mean? It was going real well, which was kind of weird because that would have been, that would have, the 7700K there would have been boosting at 4.5 gigahertz. So the 7820X with the overclock, mate, you could say, well, I don't know, maybe it's early bars. I don't know though. But we do have to point out that the that's still like the Intel stuff still right at the top um, with that one. But if you look at the other ones, so like for argument's sake, Total Warhammer on the Ryzen X, don't forget this was at launch as well, um, was 74.6. So with this, it was 76. So the Ryzen overclock, that would have been four point something. With this, you would have been looking at, um, like I said, the 7820X, that would have been at four, and then you've got the other one at the top, which was um, 4.8. When you kind of say that bit out loud, because they are eight cores for eight cores, 1.6 frames per second, not that big a gap, really, is it? So in the grand scheme of things, yes, with a game that's gonna love the CPU, uh, and by the CPU, I don't even mean multi-threaded stuff, I mean clock speed. Clock speed's gonna win. There's, there's no kind of if, ands, or buts around it. But the other thing I do need to say is this was Ryzen at launch. They've done quite a few optimizations with Ryzen. There's Ryzen Agisa updates that have been done. So to be honest with you, gaming-wise, this versus the Ryzen stuff is horrifically close. Now the uh, 1800X was, I think it's still 450 pounds. This is gonna be, let's say 600 quid, give or take, we don't know because let's face it, no one's, yeah, anyway. So 600 versus 450 quid for a couple of frames a second, there isn't a great deal in it. But the thing is, is I don't personally see the 1800X as a viable processor for anyone. As in, do not bother. Just buy the 1700, now that's 300 quid. And if I was gonna, gonna save 350, 300 pound for a processor and it was gonna make my games run 1.5, maybe two frames per second less, I'd save the money and I'd buy a better graphics card. Quote that. Right, so then we go on to PC Mark 8. And with PC Mark 8, uh, you can see that they're all at the top. The, the Intel stuff does do well. Um, and then the X265 benchmark, this is another one. It's the X265, it does fairly well. And we've not got the 6900K in this or the 6950X, because this is a relatively new benchmark for us. And you can see it is a bit above the overclocked Ryzen stuff. Um, and then when we go to Cinebench R15, this does use your cores, this does use everything that you can chuck at it. And you can see here that really you need an overclock 1700 or 1800X to be able to keep up with a stock 7820X. As soon as you smash that overclock in, you can see it jumps right near the top and it actually starts chasing after the 6950X, but it also goes way above the 6900K. So with, um, really using the cores and video editing and rendering and all that sort of stuff, the 7820X, even at stock, is almost as quick as the old 7900K. So they, they would have been, um, there is a bit of clock speed and stuff going on with all of that. Anyway, so to break it down, it is very much a processor of two halves. Now I know all the AMD people are gonna want me to say, the 1800X is cheaper. And the 1800X is cheaper, but to be honest with you, it's still too expensive and I would tell you to buy the 1700. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna be going for 300 versus 600. So it's half the price. It's pretty much the way that the AMD stuff seems to work. Now with a bit of balance, and I know at this point there are gonna be red team people throwing stuff at the screens, but there is no way to get past the fact that the Intel stuff is quicker. You just cannot get away from it. And it's also, I don't think we're gonna be feeling like we're on an active beta process either. Because with all the Agisa stuff with AMD, I said it at the start that I was just like, I don't think uh, Ryzen should have been out for another couple of months. I don't think it felt finished. All these live Agisa updates, 
they've given the BIOS engineers so much headache because every time they drop one out, oh yeah, we've made memory a bit better, they're having to go back and redo all of their um, BIOS because it pretty much ruins everything. So I do think they, they needed to have held that back a bit and you lot have helped them develop it. It's been a live development process, that's the way it's been. This out of the box, 3600 megahertz, I do think we're gonna get more. The, but I think the real big thing and the reason why they're going to do better in most of the benchmarks, so basically clock for clock, the Intel stuff is going to be marginally better. And if I'm honest, with a, a lot of stuff, what you are gonna have to do is, if we're going to go eight core for eight core, what you are gonna have to do is, you're rising, you're gonna have to overclock it to keep up with the Intel stuff. But that's stuff that people were always on about in the past. Um, so, and I don't think, if, you're a, if, you're, if you've got um, some of the rise and stuff, and I do think, you know, that should be a given that you are gonna need to tinker with it to get the best from it. This, when you do tinker with it yourself though, this then goes that bit further. So you've, it's, you, essentially you have got something here that you can get more from, but it is gonna come down to how much money do you have? Because if the processor alone is twice as much, then you, you're, you're starting to spend a lot more money. You also need to think about, if you've gone for the, the, the eight, which is what I'm reviewing, there's another two memory sticks over there. Now, if you'd normally only buy, for argument's sake, a 16 gigabyte kit, two times eight, with this, the same kind of kit, you need another two sticks, it's gonna near on double the price of the memory as well. You do really, if you wanna overclock this, need to make sure that you have decent cooling as well, because like I said, once you, it does go up, you can. I wouldn't wanna be running this at 1.2 volts with anything other than AIO. If I'm honest, if you're gonna overclock it at all, I'd want an AIO with it. So you're looking at another 100 pound really for a half decent one of those anyway. So the prices do start to kind of go up and eke out. So in the grand scheme of things, there isn't any other way. Eight versus eight, the Intel stuff is quicker, but it's also significantly more expensive as well. So it really depends on what you wanna do. If you just wanna be able to go to your friends and go, yep, I've got a processor and it's running at 4.8 gigahertz and I can render my video um, 35 seconds quicker than you can. I can guarantee you, your mate's gonna be going, oh, I'm still beating you in Counter-Strike or I'm still beating you in, um, uh, uh, let's pick another game, League of Legends. Let's pick another game, Total Warhammer. Let's pick another game. Uh, let's there's something that I like, Project Cars. I'm still, you may be able to render your video 30 seconds quicker, yet your mate, you know, with a slightly lower spec AMD system is, you know, like 15 seconds quicker around a lap. It really depends where you want to spend your money. And this is the point where I want to say at the end that it does get really confusing because if you said to me, Tom, I want to buy a 7, 8, 20K and I'm going to play games on it, I'd be like, just games? Why? Because that's the other thing, really, is this does get to a point where it does blur some lines. It's about content creation. The cores are good for making stuff. If you're going to be 3D editing, if you're going to be photo editing, if you're going to be rendering videos, do you know what I mean? If you're going to be making games or something, there's the outside of it where you can say, oh, yeah, you can use those extra cores for streaming and the like. But to be honest with you, do you know what I mean? You don't need eight cores for streaming, really. The reason why AMD have got eight cores is they are running slightly lower, and it does mean that you can have a couple of cores, you know, off doing, you know, the streaming work, and then the other stuff is concentrating on your games. But with this, it, it does blur the lines quite, quite a bit, if I'm honest. So at the end of the day, best thing I can say to you is if you're just gaming, go and get the 7700K. Yeah, you can overclock that, you can still have a good laugh with it. This is about needing CPU grunt, and at this present moment in time, games don't need CPU grunt. And that counts as well when we start talking about Threadripper, because Threadripper, it's a Ryzen processor with Infinity Fabric, and there's more clusters going on in there, so it's still Ryzen. So essentially all that's gonna do is it's going to allow you to 
edit your videos better. It's going to allow you to do all your content um, stuff better. It's not going to make your games run any faster. So the grand scheme of things, boiling it all down, kicking everything out the way is if you want it for gaming, it's a lot of money. And to be honest with you, there are probably better places that you could spend your money. If, however, you want it because you do need a lot of grunt and all those reasons that I've said to you before, then this will be faster than the AMD stuff, but you will pay for the privilege. The only other thing that you've got, and this is one that I saved right for the end, is that if you were to buy this eight core, you would be able to drop a 12, 14, 16, 18 core processor in it if you got some money and you needed some more grunt. With the, um, the Ryzen stuff, you need to be on Threadripper from the start. And we do, there's a lot of stuff that we don't know about that yet because it's not out yet and it's gonna be out late, like late August. So we don't know, it's all speculation. AMD are absolutely pulling their brains out about it. And to be honest with you, I don't mind talking too much about it being AMD are pulling their brains out about it because Intel didn't send me this processor. And this is why I've not given it um, an award. And this is why we're now into, if you want to tune out people, we're now into my kind of ranty bit. So this is the bit where I say I'm really not particularly happy about the way stuff's going on. So I, I am very lucky. I get toys to play with, whether they stay or whether they go back, it depends on what happens at that present moment in time. But Intel did promise me, and I got an email saying, we are sending you a four, and a 10 core processor and I was like amazing so then when I got um, there are ways and means that every media can get stuff um, hold of products so CPUs there are many options for us so when someone came to me and they said I got a few tens and I've got a single eight core processor I was like I'll have the eight and they were like what why don't you want the 10 because I, like, I know I'm getting one Intel said they're going to send me a 10 and a 4. So I was getting 4 core, um, 8 thread, a 10 core, 20 thread from Intel. Someone else has got an 8. So me being me and wanting to deliver the very best review and content for you, I said, can I have the 8, please? It's also the one that nobody else wanted. because And then that made me feel better because I'm not going to take away processes. I could have asked for a 10 as well, and I didn't because I didn't want to be... Um, uh, 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 um, uh, just a, not a nice person. I can't think of the best way of the word that I wanted to say. I didn't want to be a bottom. So I said, I'll have the eight. Now, the thing is, is if I hadn't have taken that eight, I wouldn't have a review for you for NDA because they come to us last week and they said to us, "Your the processes are late. Now, our um, uh, issue in the UK is we knew that the United States reviewers had had their processors. Some of them had had them for over a week at that point. And we still didn't have any at all. Now I worked my nuts off over the last few weeks to clear out all my reviews. So this working week just gone, I left it completely bare so I could dedicate it just to doing this. Just like I did when Ryzen came out. I had the decks clear so that when Ryzen landed, I could literally jump all over it, dedicate all my time to it, stay up late, find out stuff, so that I've got all this stuff to talk to you about. And then when Intel turned around to us and just went, yeah, you're not getting them to after NDA. I genuinely think that, well, I don't know, there's part of me, there's part of me that thinks they've been in the country all along and they were trying to stop leaks. Problem was, the leaks came out anyway. So all you've done is you've held sites like me back from doing my job and delivering my content the way that I wanted to. And you can see I'm looking straight in the camera like this and I genuinely am just like, there's a, a mixture of disappointment and rage and all kinds of stuff because essentially all Intel managed to do in the end was help the people that broke the NDAs last time. So all the people that broke the NDAs last time just got to do it again, and then people like me, I have nothing to deliver, well, apart from this one, I have nothing to deliver on the NDA day. So then when the, the processors do turn up, I have to work twice as fast, twice as hard, for like tenths 
sixth of the amount of website and YouTube traffic that I would have got because everybody else's reviews are going to be out there. Why are you going to go and watch mine five days later when you've already watched 10 or 20 different Skylake X reviews? It's just so unfair. It's unreal. And it's just, like I said, they, all they've done is they've just handed the, the, the bonuses to the people that they shouldn't really have been supporting in the first place. I get why the people that have broken NDA have done it because essentially when they got the email to say you're not getting processes, they were just like, we've already got them, we're just going to put it up. But it's just, it's getting to the point now where I genuinely am finding it really difficult to get enthusiastic about being undervalued and I don't mean that from just a personal point of view because you'd be thinking oh you get processes anyway do you know what I mean think yourself lucky well, you could say think yourself lucky but it's not just me and it's just if they had them why wouldn't they have wanted me to have delivered you content if they were annoyed with people about breaking NDA last time maybe they should have done something about it do you know what I mean None of us have signed NDAs. That's why they've broken it, because they never signed anything. It's, it's mental. So to be honest with you, on big launches like this, I, I look for big launches like this to spend a lot of time on because I hope to bring this to my regulars first and foremost. But I do also hope to bring new and interesting content to people that may not have seen one of my long-winded, talking too much videos in the past, and they might like it but also bring them into the website. Because at the end of the day, I do have a website, oc3d.net, and I rely on that to be able to bring you any content. You know what I mean? Being a, all of this stuff, do you know what I mean? It's not free and it does cost an awful lot of money. So I do that by making reviews. And I do that and I, I hopefully bring people into the website. There are a few banners around the outside and if you look at those banners, then that's, that's the way the internet works. That's how it works. So by Intel not allowing me to bring you content like this, I'm effectively not having my big open day. I haven't got that big thing to shout about. So like I said, at the end of the week, when maybe I'll get the processes, maybe I won't after this, I don't know. If you don't see it, they've obviously been annoyed and they've not sent it out. But I'm not gonna get to have my big shout out, come and have a look at my website. Look at all this work that we've done until later on when you've seen everybody else's. And it, it does just get to the point where it's like, why bother? Shall I just go on to doing motherboard reviews? Because at the end of the day, you've seen all the processor stuff anyway. And I don't know, it's a serious concern for me at the moment. Do I want to bother just doing a CPU review when all you're gonna to wanna to look at at the end of the week is motherboard reviews because you're not gonna care about CPUs anymore. And this is where they have not thought about the impact that their actions can, and I could have said many other things there, make on everything else. So that is my rant. I'm incredibly, incredibly, I think unhappy is the best way that I can put it, but it's, there's frustration, there's disappointment, there's, there's so many things and it's just like, you know, if when I first saw all of the negative hate towards Intel a couple of weeks ago when I first started doing previews of X299 boards, I was actually like, cool your jets a bit, you know, don't worry about it. But the way I've been treated now, like I said, I don't know, do you know what I mean? I hope I still get the four and a 10 because I've got a genuine interest in doing this stuff and researching this stuff and trying to help you guys. But I would have been much more enthusiastic and much more willing to have done 16 and 18 hour days to have got them done before NDA, but delivering to them to me after NDA when I know loads of other people have had their uh, stuff for weeks and I think it's been artificially held back that point that's the bit that really just boils my blood so yeah I might have got completely the wrong end of the stick but the problem is, is I don't know anything other than they're late and when you know that yours are late or the whole of the countries are late miraculously everybody else have got theirs I don't know. But anyway, like I said, I could have had it totally wrong. And if I did, I will apologize. But if I haven't, then 
that's just that's just the way that I personally have been left feeling. Um, and like I said, if I haven't have been able to have got this eight core, which is hidden underneath here, which technically I probably shouldn't have, then I wouldn't have been able to have done anything. Yet because I'm a good person, despite everybody else doing the leaks, I've still adhered to an NDA that I didn't sign because I've not been asked to sign one and I've actually only signed them for motherboards. Weird that. Anyway, so long story short, if, if you've got the money, then it is quicker. Um, there's no real power benefits. And in the grand scheme of things, it won't make games any better. Having this many cores is all about content creation and that sort of stuff, especially with this kind of level of expense as well. I don't understand what they've done with the four core and the dual thread type of thing because that just feels like they've just dragged Kaby Lake in and tried to add it to another platform. It does give us options, but at the end of the day, it's just, it's kind of where it's just dual channel and stuff, it, it does feel a little bit kind of backwards. And I, it would be something that maybe people were going to end up running in like offices and stuff like that. But I don't know. It, it, it's definitely a complicated one. And I'm just going to leave it with you. So I apologize if you've watched till the end and you've seen my rant, but that's how I feel and that's how I've been left feeling. And I will see what happens next week. Please understand, though, that I have taken a massive gamble to even say any of that publicly because it could end up landing me in trouble. I might not get my CPUs. I genuinely don't know what's going on at the moment. But the whole, you know, you're not gonna get them till after NDA. Why not delay the launch? Why not let everyone publish their reviews at the same time? Why hold back an entire country? Do they not trust us? Do they not value our opinion? Or is it the fact that they value our opinion a little bit too much? Or is it because they would rather help the people that are breaking the NDAs and hamper the hard working people that value relationships and value, you know, trying to toe the line? Because I've got to admit it, people, I'm now wondering why you bother with NDAs at all. Because there's clearly no value to them anymore. Yeah.